Hello citizens, how are you all doing today? It's been a couple of weeks, it's been a little quiet, I haven't been really getting into it. So let's get into this. So we know we've actually come up to some pretty big milestones within what the last 24 hours or so. We've just had the announcement of uh, static server meshing going into Evocati, which is really great. That is good to hear. We've also had a little bit more news and a little bit more coverage on the Idris itself. And that's what we're here to talk about today because this is a sh channel of ships. As you well know, that's what I cover. So we've gone over the Idris in leaks. We've gone through walkthroughs. Everyone's been asking me to get more content and do walkthroughs. I can't do it because I don't know how to do that. So let's get into this segment of the video. As you can see, they've flown straight into the back of the Idris, and here you go, the, the front opening up. Now, going into this ship, I'm going to say that, you know, it's it's pretty interesting. You can fit three Gladiuses in there. I don't know if people are going to try and fit more, but it's definitely set to fit three in there. So whether or not you want to try and push some more in there, I don't think that's going to be a real possibility. I think three is going to be the set limit, and there may be some form of um, way for them to hinder people being able to put more ships in there. I may be wrong, but it seems like it could cause issues down the track. Now, going over the hangar, it's quite open, it's quite spacious, but it does have a foot like a feel of small to it. Here you see the decks, and you know they have added a fair bit to this since its original concept so as you can see all the corridors above the hangar there uh, all the bridges coming down all the rooms connecting and their biggest point with this ship was that there is no dead ends this ship was purely designed to be a pvp back in the day here you see the argo now they were saying that a lot of people that they when they you know have opened up the bottom here have fallen out of it in atmosphere so don't do that. That's not a good idea. But this here, obviously, is the Argo. This is what it's intended for to go down to the planet surface, touch down, get what they need, and then come back up to the ship. Here, you have the gravitational room, gravi gravity room, whatever. And that shield you see there sort of comes around and turns this room into its own sphere, if you would say as such. It's pretty much its own room. So it's sort of connected within itself but you can get in there by opening that up. And this is where they were discussing the openness of this ship and the way they've designed it. Every part of this ship is not going to have a dead end on it. So depending on whether you're going to like the bridge or somewhere, obviously it's going to be some form of a dead end, but there's still going to be openings to other corridors. As you know, you've got those two sky bridges going up to the bridge. Now, going over this ship, the design is very functional. It's very clean crisp i like aegis designs and to see what they've done with the idris here is just absolutely phenomenal i can't wait to see this ship get put into action and what people decide to do with this thing within their fleets and within star citizen it seems like we're going to be getting pretty close to unlocking this as well which i'm pretty stoked about i don't know what about everyone else thinks but i'm quite happy to see where they're going in the direction with this ship and that they're actually giving us more progress updates and what they're actually changing on this ship so let us know down in the comments what you all think of this because in my mind i think this is a very good place to be for now and that you know from where we were in 2023 to where we are now in 2024 i think we can only expect more things to come whether or not we actually get our hands on the Idris anytime soon and Squadron come out, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So just enjoy what we got now. Hopefully this event sort of carries over into the PU as well because that would be nice. I have not played Star Citizen in many upon many weeks. I've been playing Skull and Bones and Helldivers too. So as you can see here, it looks like the captain's quarters. It's very clean, very crisp and just loving the design missile room i think a lot of people wanted to see what was in the missile room when we got the leaks but we really didn't get to see anything on that which was a little bit of a shame so what we have here seems to be some sort of shots through the ship this looks like the mess area more of the hangar and those pieces behind the ships look like they flick up like what you would have on a carrier as such as you got some 
sound deadening looks from on the walls there some more corridors and these corridors do seem very open so barely really like really any cover for you to actually hide behind and sort of hide from enemies that are boarding your ship or whether or not you're the border and you're getting attacked or whatnot so there are some side pieces off to the side there as you can see where the doors open and close so that could be cover and whether or not you know you could have that sort of operation if you were to board that ship here you have your med bay we've seen the med bay but you would have some tier one med beds in here and everything that you would pretty much need to bring someone back from the dead or sort of resuscitate them as such as we know that tier two and tier three will sort of dwindle away uh, with those abilities i think tier three has already lost that tier two is said to lose that once tier one sort of makes its way into the verse but these beds are looking nice, sleek, clean. I keep saying it, but this ship just hits all the points right. And I think they've done a really good job with actually taking the time and designing this ship as it should be and sort of having a look through. Because remember, this ship was specifically more or less designed for PvP, but it was also more or less designed for Squadron on that sort of scale as well. So taking that into consideration you can take a little bit more like opportunity to think about what you can do with this ship whether or not you can have some sort of a tactical plan when you may or may not get boarded but it's always good to have that back up there more turret seats looking good more escape pods so hopefully when this ship actually comes out the escape pods actually work because a lot of them are just useless right now you just they're pretty much a decoration on the ship which is a little bit you know annoying uh starboard which is another area of the ship i would say that would be maybe the star ball or maybe where you do briefing i don't know i didn't really pay too much attention throughout the years on the idris but saying that it wouldn't be too hard to figure out i mean once you're on the ship what it actually is those pieces off to the right there they were actually simulation pits so those there are like sim pits apparently i don't know but that's what I have heard, and they would be pretty awesome to be able to use them once it's in. But again, these winding corridors, everyone's saying that this ship has, you know, got a lot of unused space. They're sort of just wasting the area away with the corridors. Remember, this is a military ship. This isn't supposed to be anything fancy. It's supposed to be simplistic. It's supposed to get the job done. When you go onto a, a normal ship, I guess, yeah, there's going to be a lot of area used up. But this doesn't need to be like that. It would just create so much more work. You would have to have so many more people on the ship. And it's just, it would just make everything so much more complicated. So the way they've done it compared to what people would want them to do, I think is probably the better way to go around it. And I know it sucks to say that, but it also brings up a lot of other people who think they may know better than the developers. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying, you know. And here you go. This is sort of the briefing room. This is where you come, talk about a plan, talk about what's happening, do your daily briefings, maybe even do like your morning pre-start meetings before you actually start with your operations and moving around. So do like your cross-shifting as well. Um, this is sort of like your shooting range as well, which will be something nice to have on a ship and be able to actually practice or do some sort of scoring system have just some sort of shenanigans and fun on the ship, sort of tie it in. It sort of gives it that more of a military feel as well. I like how they got the glass along there so you can watch people shoot and how they go. More openings here. I believe this is sort of like a cargo area, as I would believe. But again, my guess isn't all that great, <laughs> as we know that. But again, this ship has so many decks, it has so much space, it's absolutely insane what you can do on this ship and how much it, or how long it would actually take you to tour this ship. Again, like this decontamination room is just absolutely insane. The way they like the lights flip and come up and down and go across. I get sort of really sort of into that sort of stuff. Here we have the engine room again. It doesn't look too complicated, but for an engineer, it may be a bit of a, um, a nightmare as such, and you may need one, maybe two engineers, maybe even more. I don't know, but it seems like this ship's going to be a little bit of a logistic nightmare if you can't pull the people together and get the right people where you want them to be. So, you know, having a big org is going to be great, 
but you're gonna need roles on this ship. You're gonna need people who know parts of this ship and know exactly what they're doing because it will cause issues. It will cause you to lose. It will cause you to die if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't have the right plan in place, which isn't something that you want. We all want to succeed on this ship. We all wanna to work together and this ship is gonna be one of those monumental pieces, just like the Polaris really, is seeing how people are gonna be actually able to pull together and possibly even work together. Whether or not you're gonna be able to do that, that, that was a Terrapin. Did you see that? That was a Terrapin in the hangar. I'm quite certain that that was a Terrapin. So that may also give you some indication as to sort of how big the hangar is and whether or not you could fit a bigger ship than the Terrapin in there. Whether or not the front and the back allow it, I don't know. It seems like it may have that leniency for you to bring in more and possibly bigger ships. Whether or not you want to do that, I don't know. But the outside design of this thing is absolutely insane. I love the Idris. I'm glad I've got one. Definitely want to see more of the Javelin once they sort of get more work done on that. As you can see here, this is the sky bridge leading up to the bridge so this is where you have all your like co-pilots gunners well some of your gunners um for the remote turrets um you got your big you know navigational bally thingy midjiggy in the middle you got your captains uh captain you got your pilot man i just want to be piloting that thing with that massive size 10 at the end of it i think all of us want to do that but let us know what you think of the address let us know what you think of their progress lately and what they could do in the future to improve this but hope you enjoyed see you on this other side